hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king and today i'm going to be giving you part eight of what if naruto created his own village remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends on your social media platform and also go ahead and check out the new episode of what if naruto was trained by kaguya i did a new episode of that so go ahead and enjoy and also guys Go ahead and check out Anime King 2 when you're done over here because I'm going to be posting a new episode of What If Naruto Joined the Akatsuki and also What If Naruto Had the Sharingan and the Byakugan Mix. And if you're new and this is the first time you're hearing my voice, go ahead and click that red subscribe button on both channels and become a part of the Anime King family guys. And remember if you're new to go ahead and comment down below and tell me I'll be replying and talking back to all of you guys. So yeah, without further ado, let's get straight into this new episode. So to do a little bit of a recap, Naruto faced off against Kakazu as he told Fu and Moshe that he will handle this. As both Naruto and Kakazu then battle, but in the end Naruto won. He then went over to Yujito as Moshe and Fu then appeared back and told them that no one is alive in the village. Fu then asks Naruto what is he going to do with her as Naruto said he's going to try and create some peace between him and the Raikage. It was then a team from Konoha showed up which was team Asuma. Naruto then told them that he dealt with the Akatsuki and there is nothing else left here as he and his team went off. Yujito then woke up at the Phoenix country as she wondered where the hell she was. It was then Naruto came into the room as he explained everything that happened, as he brought her something to eat, knowing that she must be hungry, as he told her that he would bring her back to her village. So she spent the night there. They then arrived to the village the next day, as Samui was the one to greet them, as she told them that the Raikage is waiting for them. As they went up to the Raikage's office, it was then that Naruto came and talked to him, as Naruto told him that he didn't retaliate after sending all of those ninjas to destroy the phoenix village so he wanted to create some kind of truce between the both of them but the raikage was having none of that as the haksabi then sends the nine tails inside of naruto which made the raikage want to crush naruto even more he then ordered yujito to attack naruto but she refused naruto was the one who saved her life and he was not a bad person Naruto KCM that flared up to life as he turned into the fox KCM and ripped open the roof. He then picked up Yujito and bring her in the KCM as he told her that he's bringing her back to his village. She then told him to pick up Samui as well because she's her best friend and she will come with them as Naruto picked up Samui and placed her in the KCM as Yujito told her to calm down that she will explain everything. The Raikage then flared up his lightning around him as he tried to attack Naruto. So yeah guys, that was basically last what we left off. You guys switch across the playlist and check it out for yourself. So let's start this new episode. The Raikage was flying at Naruto and Naruto was in his Fox KCM form. As the Raikage brought up his fist to try and go right through it and punch Naruto, but he was grabbed by the Fox arm. As Naruto raised him straight up into the air and then slammed him right through his tower as he was sent through the ground to the underneath. Yujito, what the hell is going on? asked Samui. Why are you siding with him? I don't know, but it's already gone too far. So, I want you to come with us. Come with you? asked Samui. Yes, I want you to come with us. We're going to be going to the Phoenix Village. I can't do that. I am a ninja of Kumo. Yes, I know. And I am as well, but the Raikage ordered me to attack Naruto and I didn't. And I know that there is going to be terrible consequences. But I want you to come with me as well. Naruto is going to bring us to the Phoenix Village. And you're my best friend. We're like family. We grew up together. So please, just come with me, said Yujito. But this will start all kind of problems, said Samui. And we would be running away from our village, becoming missing Nin. Don't worry, we will become a part of the Phoenix village. As Yujito then walked over to Samui as she held her hand, 
Please, don't let me go alone. Just come with me. Some within sigh as she looked up at Naruto, who was not looking at them. If you have faith in this boy, then I will as well, and I won't ever leave you alone, said Samui. As Yujito gave her a hug, thank you, she whispered. It was then that Octopus Tail grabbed the fox, shaking both Samui and Yujito as Naruto saw the eight tails. The fox arm held onto the octopus tail as the fox started to spin as he sent the eight tail flying and crashing into a building. The Raikage then got up from all of the rubble as he had a few scratches here and there. He jumped up at Naruto again, lightning covered all over him as Naruto simply used one of his tail and swatted him away like a fly as he was sent crashing into the ground. It's time to go, Naruto said as he looked down at Yujito and Samui. Are you guys ready? The both of them nodded as the fox then leaped. As he created a great distance between the tower, he then leaped again as he was now out of the village. As he started the run, as it was moving at a great speed and they got a great distance away. As Yujito looked over at Samui, as Samui was looking back at the village. She couldn't leave Yujito alone, but now the both of them are missing names. As the both of them headed off with Naruto. Hours later, the Raikage was in a room with B and Darui and C as council members was with them as well. This will not be allowed, the Raikage said. He took off with one of our tail beasts and he also took off with Samui, one of our greatest warriors. We will attack the Phoenix Village and we will crush Naruto, the Raikage said. As Darui narrowed his eyes at the Raikage, he was the one that started this all when he tried to capture Naruto. But the Raikage was his leader, so he couldn't really say anything about that. But he couldn't believe that Yujito and Samui chose Naruto as he was surprised, especially for Samui to went along with the idea. But she and Yujito were best friends since they were much younger, so she wouldn't leave her alone. Back at the Phoenix Village, Naruto arrived as the KCM faded away as they all fell to their feet. Samui then walked up to Naruto as she grabbed him by the shirt. As Naruto turned and looked at her, Okay, what did you do to my friend? she said. What do you mean? Naruto asked. As she looked at Yujito, She's been a cloud ninja for her entire life and you come along and now she's changed and want to join your village? Are you controlling her mind or something like that? Answer me, said Samui. Naruto raised his hand as he placed it on Samui's shoulder. Trust me, I am not controlling her mind or anything like that. I just told her the truth. The Raikage seemed to favor the eight tails far better than she. Well, he basically just treats she like a weapon. And here, I will give her a better life for her to live and do what she want and not be treated like any kind of weapon. And you as well, said Naruto. You can stay here and become a part of the Phoenix Village as well. It seems like you and Yujito are best friends. And I would love for you to stay here as well. Naruto gave her a smile as she didn't know why. But she blushed a bit as she released his shirt. As she turned her head. Whatever she said as she looked at Yujito. Yujito, are you sure this is what you want to do? We can still go back and beg for forgiveness. Yujito placed a hand on Samui's shoulder. Trust me, this is what I want to do, she said with a smile. Alright, said Samui, I trust you. She then turned and looked at Naruto. You know this is going to cause war, you know that. Seeing that I came to talk about peace and your Raikage attacked me and basically tried to capture me like a guinea pig and then destroy my village. I know, he's very angry. Yeah, this is certainly gonna cause war. But don't worry, you two are safe here. You don't even have to interfere or lift a finger. I will deal with all of that soon, said Naruto. Now, follow me, Naruto said as they all went inside of the village. After a walk around the village as Naruto showed them about the place, 
Naruto then brought him to the mansion that he and his group stay in. As it had a lot of bedrooms, as Naruto told them to just pick a room that is not occupied, as the both of them went off and checked out the place. Two more additional members, said Naruto, as he now had another tail beast, and also this Samui girl is quite strong, he could tell. But he knew that this will cause a lot of problem. The Raikage is going to send a lot of his force here and try to wipe out his village and try to take them back. So he has to be prepared for anything that is about to come. As Naruto shook his head, at least it cannot get any worse. Meanwhile that was going on, the masked man and Pain was talking. I want you to go and capture the Nine Tails, said the masked man. So you want me to go and attack the Phoenix Village? Pain asked. Yes, said the masked man. And also, the other tail beasts are there as well. He has the six tails, the Jinjulki Utagata, and he also has the seven tails, the Jinjulki Fu. So there is three tail beasts there. So you're going to have to use all of your paths while you take that village. And don't take any risks. The nine tail Jinjulki is quite strong. I won't fail, said Pain. As the masked man then disappeared in a swirling vortex. As Pain looked at the rain that was coming down. As Tendo, Pain then got up. As Conan appeared behind him. So, when will we do this? She asked. We will attack. The strike of dawn tomorrow, he said. But prepare yourself. He then jumped off the tower as he flew down. Hours later at Konoha, they have heard the news about what happened as we now find everyone in a council meeting. You see, Hokage said Danzo, this boy is becoming a threat more and more every day, said Danzo as he looked at Sanadi. He's captured the two tail from the Cloud Village. That is another Jinjuliki under his belt. Imagine if he decided to turn all of those Jinjulki against Konoha to attack the village, we would surely be destroyed. Adding with his original nine tails inside of him, I must agree with Danzo, said Shikaku. Naruto is becoming quite a problem if he minds to gather all the tail beasts and keep them all in his village. There is no doubt that this will cause a war amongst all the nation. No nation is supposed to have all tail beasts, said Shikaku. Lady Snavi clenched her fist. I know, alright, she said. But what do you want me to do, she asked Danzo. We need to go to war right now, before this boy become any more powerful. We need to wipe out the Phoenix village. Remember what he said, said Choza. If we attack his village, he is going to come back here and destroy Konoha. But he said if we leave his village alone, he won't retaliate against us. And do you really believe him, said Danzo. This boy hate us for what we did. Most of the civilians in this village treat him like crap when he was much younger. And then he became a ninja to try and change that. But instead of becoming a part of Konoha, he got banished. One day he will snap and he will try to take everything out on Konoha. And the power that he has behind him now, he can. Snadi gritted her teeth as she didn't know what to do. Alright Snadi, if you don't want to listen to me. It was then, someone came into the room. As Snadi turned around to see the fire Daimyo. Daimyo, what are you doing here? asked Snadi. I have heard from Danzo, said the fire Daimyo. And this Naruto boy is really a threat. Years ago, when we banished him, his power was too unstable but now he has it under control and he also has other tail beasts behind him. From what Danzo informed me and he's becoming too powerful and we need to stop him. And I agree with Danzo's plans to eradicate the Phoenix village and get the Kayobe back under Konoha control. And also Danzo has come up with a plan, a seal that we can take the other tail beasts and strengthen Konoha. As Snadi narrowed her eyes at Danzo, he has really messed with the fire daimyo's head. 
and there's nothing she can do about it. All right, said Sanadi. We will attack the Phoenix village and we will regain the control of the Kayube, she said. As she felt bad inside, this is going to cause a war. And what happened if Naruto see this coming and retaliate? How many people will die, she thought. Later that night, Naruto came from the office after going through a bunch of paperwork. As he headed back to the mansion, as he was so tired, his eyes was half closed all the way back home. As he finally arrived home, he opened the door and saw that all the lights were off, meaning that everyone has went to bed. As he just made his way to his room, Naruto opened the door as he saw his comfy bed as he walked over to it as he dropped down. As he then snuggled up, in minutes he drifted off to sleep. He was then awoke by someone opening his door. As he slowly opened his eyes to see Yujito, as she opened his door, Naruto narrowed his eyes at her. Hey, what are you doing in here? I can't sleep, she said. Huh? He then sit up in his bed as she walked over to him. Why can't you sleep? Maybe because I've been going over the situation and I think that I made a big mistake coming here. So, you're having regrets, Naruto asked. Yeah, kind of, she said. But I know it's too late to go back to my village now. And you gave me and some way here a home. So I won't do anything bad, she said to him. She then looked at his bed. Can I stay in here with you for tonight to try and get some sleep? Naruto narrowed his eyes at her again. What do you mean? Oh, just move over, she said, as she got in bed with him, making Naruto blush a bit. As she then spoke, I don't know what it is, but there is just something about you. What do you mean, Naruto asked. Well, didn't you find it strange? Well, I guess you don't see it, but I do, said Yujito. I have this strange attachment towards you, and I don't know why. Ever since I lay my eyes on you, Hey kitten, said the Nebi. Are you going to tell him you like him? But Yujito didn't respond, as Naruto was now sweating, as it was the first time he ever had a girl in his bed like this and so close to him. Well, what I'm trying to say is, as she looked up at him, I like you, Naruto. You like me? He said. Yeah, I like you. But that doesn't mean that I am going to, you know. I don't, said Naruto. You know, she said. As she looked down, Naruto gulped. Wait, Yujito, are you talking about sex? He asked. Yeah, she said. As she blushed. I'm not going to have sex with you just because I told you that I like you. I just want to sleep here for the night, okay? That's fine with me, said Naruto, as he was blushing as well. Alright, she said. As she then snuggled up next to him, as she put his arm around her, making Naruto blush even more, as she just rested her head on his chest, as Naruto couldn't believe that this was happening. He just met this girl and she told him that she liked him. Is there something about me? He wondered to himself. Wait, Hinata, he said. So she liked me as well. That is why she's always acting that way. And I've never saw it. Whoa, I am really oblivious, said Naruto to himself. I wonder, as he thought about Fu and Karin's reaction towards him, I wonder if they like me as well. Well, I'm not going to find it out, thinking right now as he closed his eyes and drift off into sleep. The next morning, there was a scream as Naruto opened his eyes to see Fu at his doorway, as she was the one who screamed, as she has a pissed off look on her face. It was then that everyone thought that something was happening, as everyone rushed over. Naruto had introduced them all yesterday, so they all knew Yujito and Samui now but they weren't that close as friends, yet. 
as Utagata, Karin, Raymen, and Moshe and Samui, they all came up as they wondered what was going on, as they saw Fu at the door and then looked inside. As Naruto had his arm wrapped around Yujeo, she was snuggled up on his chest. What happened? said Fu. As Naruto noticed that Karin and Fu were angry, even Samui looked a bit ticked off, while Raymond just gave Naruto a thumbs up. As Moshi just sighed, as this is going to be troublesome, he thought. As he looked at Fu, he then walked off with Utakata. As Yujito then looked at Naruto, oh, it's not like that, she said, as she waved her hands in defense. It was then something alert Naruto as his face turned serious. What is that? As something break the barrier, Naruto said Karin, yeah, I know. Naruto quickly jumped out of bed as he threw on his clothes. Naruto rushed outside as they heard a boom, something, someone was attacking the village. Wait, could this be the Raikage? So quickly, said Naruto. Naruto grabbed his sword as he rushed off with the others following behind him. Naruto then realized that the village was being attacked from all over. He then sent out the team Reim and Moshe along with the ninja scouts and a special core to go and check it out. As he then saw someone standing on top of his tower as he went to investigate that himself. Naruto rushed up there as he arrived to see a man with orange hair. He had piercing all over. Who the hell are you? Naruto asked. Are you responsible for this? Yes. And I am pain, the man said. So you're here to get revenge on your Akaski's buddy that I killed? No, we are here for you, Nine-Tailed Jinjuliki. And also the rest of the Jinjulikis here. Well, I can't allow you to take neither of them, said Naruto, as he pulled out his sword. You dare come into my village and try to attack it? I'll end you, Naruto said as he rushed forward. But he was then sent flying back by an invisible force. Naruto flipped over as he stabbed his sword into the ground to avoid him from being blown off the tower. As he pulled himself back to the tower. What the hell was that? What kind of jutsu is that, Naruto wondered. He then rushed through hand sign, wind style, wind disaster, as he sent a blast of wind that was tearing up everything going over the Tendo Pain. Almighty push, said Pain, as the attack was blown away. Damn it, said Naruto. Just let yourself be captured, and we won't destroy your village. Some people would get to live, or you rather do it the hard way, and most of you will end up dying he said. Naruto narrowed his eyes. I won't let myself be captured and I won't let you capture any other tail beast here. So forget it, said Naruto. Naruto then rushed towards him again as he raised his hand. Almighty, but Naruto vanished in a blinding speed as Naruto appeared behind him. Naruto brought down his sword hard, but he spin around in time. Almighty push as he sent Naruto flying back again. Naruto flicked as he landed on the tower, he then pushed forward. But this time, Tendo Pain brought up his hand. As he took out a rod, as he stopped Naruto's sword slash. So, you didn't use that ability again. Are you running out of chakra? Tendo Pain then smirked. Almighty push! As he sent Naruto flying back, as Naruto slammed into a wall. What just happened? Naruto thought. Wait, I have to think. He used his ability. There must be some kind of delayed time or something. He can't just be using that ability over and over. It's time to test it, said Naruto. Multi Shadow Clone Jutsu! As a bunch of Shadow Clones appeared, all of them rushed at Tendo Pain. Almighty push, he said, as all of them was blown away and dispelled. It was then Naruto appeared in front of him in blinding speeds. Naruto brought up his fist as Tendo Pain brought up his fist to block it. Naruto then jumped back as he pulled out three kunais. He threw them towards Tendo Pain, who then used an almighty push and blocked it. Five seconds, said Naruto. Naruto then smirked to himself. 
Alright, I think I got this. Shogun Jutsu, as he summoned a clone. The clone then rushed towards Tendo Pain, as the clone ran through hand sign. Wind style, wind palm, as he blasts a palm, pressure ear at Tendo Pain. Tendo Pain dodged it, as he stabbed the clone right through the stomach, making it poofed away. It was then Naruto rushed up at him, as Naruto ran through hand sign. As lightning was cackling off of Naruto's fingers. Lightning spear. As Naruto fire, small bolts of lightning towards him. He raised up his hand. Almighty push as all of him was blasted away. Naruto then smirked. As he poofed away showing that he was a clone. It was then the ground break under Tendo Pain. Allowing him to fall inside. As he did Naruto appear. Sword in his hand as he slashed Tendo Pain in his back. Naruto then kicked him straight in towards the wall as he smashed right into it. While this was going on, the other pains stopped fighting Naruto's ninja as they all poofed away. It was then the summoning pain arrived. He ran through Hansai as he slammed his hand on the ground as there was a poof. As all of the pains came and blocked Naruto, as Naruto was sent flying down to the ground with a kick from the absorbed pain, as Naruto flipped and dropped. So I guess I was too much for him. So you call it for a reinforcement. It doesn't matter, said Naruto. He then let out his senses as he realized that no one was close to here. Naruto then ran through hand sign, wind style, hurricane, as out of nowhere. The room started to be torn up by a deadly wind that enveloped the entire place. So the absorption pain went right in the middle as he started to absorb the attack. Naruto then disappeared as he appeared behind the summoning pain. But before he could swipe, the summoning pain fire a rod towards Naruto's shoulder as Naruto turned just in time but it gazed him. Naruto then flipped back as he didn't understand. How was that possible? He was behind him, so how did he see him? Naruto then focused on their eyes, seeing that they all are looking at him. Wait, don't tell me. Your eyes are linked, Naruto said to himself. Damn it, this is going to be much harder, and I can't fight at my true strength inside of the village. Naruto then turned as he jumped through the window. As he started to hop from building to building, and as he expected, they were following behind him. Naruto then met up on Fu, Utakata, Moshe. As Naruto stopped them, no, don't fight. Fu, Utakata, come with me, said Naruto. Moshe, let them pass. As Utakata and Fu and Naruto headed off, as the pains followed behind him, as they went outside of the village. Meanwhile, that was going on. Rayman was fighting Conan. So you're the storm of Kumo, she said to him. So, I guess you heard of me. I'm sorry, but I can't allow you to leave here alive. You guys are the one who came here and attacked our village. And also, you're part of the Akaski, so I have to take you down. Rayman then pulled out his sword as he started cackle with lightning. He then rushed at Conan as he swiped at her, but her entire body turned into paper. And she then reformed behind him. So, you're a lot tougher than I thought, but you still won't win. He then let out a swipe as it sent electricity towards her. Her body turned into paper as they turned into shurikens as they fly past a swipe. As they came towards him, he held up his blade as he slashed down as all of the papers retreated to the other side. As some of them got burned by his attack as Conan then reformed. You know, you're quite impressive, said Rayman. You would be a good additional to our village. Conan created two paper swords as she rushed towards him, as the both of them slammed their weapons together. But Rayman's sword started cackling with lightning, as his lightning sword cut right through those papers. As he swiped at Conan, but half of her face turned into paper, so he missed. You must. Have a lot of chakra pumping into your attack for you to change your body at will like that. I must say, I'm impressed, said Rayman. 
Conan then rushed at him again with a spear created from paper as he threw it at him. But I am strong as well, said Rayman, as he released a powerful wave of electricity that disintegrated the spear as Conan had to fly down towards the ground. As she landed, as she did, Raymond stabbed his sword into the ground. It was then the ground underneath her break apart as lightning burst from the ground as it strike her. As Conan winked in pain, but she jumped back. So, you're not so untouchable, said Raymond. Now, let's have some fun. As he rushed towards her, outside of the village, Naruto, Fu, and Utagata. They all stop as the six pains stop behind them. As Naruto turned around, Fu Utsukata, he said, their eyes are a link. And what I can tell about that one, he has an ability to control gravity. But there's a five second opening and that one right there can absorb. I don't really know about the next one. Oh, and that one can also summon and their eyes are a link. So you have to watch out for that. We want peace for this world, said Tendo. So just give up and come with us. Well, I can't do that. I have a village to run and I won't allow you to take my friends as well, said Naruto. Fu then took out her stingers as Naruto already had his sword in his hand as Utakata had his bubble maker in his hand as well. Utakata then ran through hand sign as he then released a steam and covered the entire area. Naruto then disappeared as Naruto appeared in front of the summoning pain within seconds. The summoning pain brought down his hand as he tried to hit Naruto. Naruto dodged to the side as he took out a rod to stab Naruto in the shoulder to subdue him. But Naruto grabbed the rod as Naruto break it. It was then Fu came out of the air as she jammed her stingers into his back piercing right through him. Fu was then sent flying away by the revival pain that kicked her right in her face as Naruto jumped over and grabbed her before she could hit hard into the ground. Almighty push said Tendo as he blew away all of the smoke clearing the area so they can see. He then looked down as the summoning pain was dead. One down said Naruto. It was then that the revival pain called the king of hell. As Naruto was shocked to what he saw, the summoning pain got revived. Damn it, I guess it's gonna be harder than we thought, said Naruto. But guys, gonna be ending this episode right here. If you want to see the next part of this, I already know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to be posted. Remember to share to all of your friends on your social media platform. But for now, I'm out of here, guys. Peace.